People often rave about the allegedly superior cutting power of curved blades, even legendary some would have it. So how do you make a curved blade even more powerful? You curve it twice. This has got to be the ultimate cutting sword, right? Well, it's pretty good. Is it designed to slice better? Yes. Is it the best thing since sliced bread? No. Either way, what's the point of sword blades with a recurve? Or even recurve grips? What's up with that? What you're doing by curving a blade is essentially sacrificing some reach for more edge real estate per centimeter or inch or foot or elbow or banana or whatever unit of measurement you like. If you're giving it a curve and a counter curve, you're maximizing that effect. If you imagine starting out with three identical bars of steel, same mass, and you want to make three different blades which have the same width and thickness. One is straight, the other is curved, and the third one is a recurve. Then the straight one is going to be the longest, followed by the simple curve, followed by the recurve. Some people seem to think that a straight blade doesn't slice at all and only cleaves or chops or whatever word they use. If you think about a guillotine, it falls straight down, right? So if it had a straight edge, that would be true, but it doesn't. The edge is at an angle, so even the guillotine actually slices or has some slicing action, even though it doesn't get any choppier than that, if you will. A sword, because you swing it in an arc as opposed to awkwardly push forward, if it rotates on its way to the target and through it, of course it's going to slice in the process. Just less so than a curved one. With a forward curved blade, the edge is ahead of the hand, so it hits earlier during this arced swing. Right? Whereas if it's curved the other way, it hits later. Right? So when it does, it trails and it's dragged through the target like this. Whereas forward curved tends to hit and then kind of push through. It's a little bit hard to explain and show, but if you, um, if you have some kind of blunt, <laughs> curved object and you hold it up against your arm and you observe how it hits, when it hits during the arc, and what it does exactly, it becomes obvious. In theory, a recurved blade should combine the best of both worlds, because it does both. So it curves forward, which means in this case, the belly of, of the blade is in front of the hand, not terribly far, but it is. And then it curves in the opposite direction. So as it impacts first, it hits with, with more of a chopping motion. Again, there's always a slice in there, but you would first impact in more of a cleave and, uh, or a push cut, however you want to look at it. And then as it travels through the target, it would turn gradually into more and more of a slice. In this case, what it also does is bring the point back into alignment. Because if you think about just curving it either direction really, either forward or backwards, you're moving the point out of alignment with the hand, right? So for a thrust, it's going to be generally more effective if the, the hand and the point form a line. In this case, it moves the point out of alignment first, but then it brings it back into alignment so that there is a more or less straight line between the hand and the point. So thrusts should be more effective in theory. In my experience, a practically noticeable difference in cutting performance comes more from the blade shape in a different sense, rather than curved or straight or which direction it's curved. It has more to do with the blade thickness and width and uh, how the edge is ground. Now, in some cases, you have uh, a fairly flat grind that then abruptly turns into an edge with a, with a fairly steep bevel. Those are horrible. They don't cut for shit. In other cases, you have a shallower angle with a more gradual transition, which tend to cut a lot better. This one here is designed with cutting power in mind, which is why it's so thin and wide, and it's very gradual. So as you can see, it's a really smooth grind all the way from the spine 
to the edge. That means that you're maximizing the cutting power at the expense of durability. And I've definitely noticed that. This edge is much more prone to damage than a lot of other blade types. Well, blade profiles or blade cross sections, I should say. In practical terms, on a historical battlefield or in a duel, the curved or recurved blade could be potentially more effective against soft targets like flesh or clothing or fabric armor, things like that, while a straight blade might be better against harder targets like bone. Now, what about a recurve grip in particular, where the blade is curved away from the target and the handle is curved in the opposite direction toward it. What's the point of that? The way I see it, this goes hand in hand with a particular technique, a certain way of cutting. If you swing with uh, both hands in tandem, basically, so you just, you just hold it and you swing primarily with, uh, with a core twist, you power it from the body, maybe you power it primarily with the left hand and the right is just there to guide it, this sort of cut, that's more of a cleaving cut. It's, it has less slicing action in it, so this wouldn't benefit you in that way. However, if you cut with a push-pull motion, where the offhand, in this case the left, pulls it in while the main hand pushes it forward, now you've got something. If you have the hand down here, that should still make a bit of a difference, simply because with a finger squeeze, you're tightening the bottom fingers. So in this case, because it's curved in that way, the bottom fingers are slightly farther forward. Of course, you can do this with any sword handle, curved or not, and there's more to it than just that. The other, the main hand also squeezes. There are a lot of different things that go into a sword cut. It's much more complex than you think. It's not just grabbing it like a club and going unga bunga. I have to admit, I've never had much of a mind for physics, so I can't explain to you in detail how this works, particularly because this complicates things a little bit. You know, like it's, it's not like a simple lever. I suppose it kind of is if you're holding it rigidly with the main hand and then you're using just the off hand to move it. In that case, this is the fulcrum, that's the effort, and the load is up there. But that's not what you're doing. You're using this hand as well. And uh, because the arms move, things rotate in a very different way, depending on whether you rotate from the elbows or from the shoulders. There's, there's a lot of complexities when it comes to swinging a sword around. Maybe somebody can explain that in the comments. Do let us know if you got this figured out, particularly how things change exactly when the second contact point is shifted forward. Or does it really? Does it really make a difference or does it just seem so? Okay, imagine this is a two-handed sword. Let's say it pivots about here, maybe. And the target is here. So in order to hit the target, we have to move the handle this much. Now, if the grip is curved like this, it travels way farther. But I have also rotated it way farther, right? Because if I put the bottom of the handle where it was before, when it was straight, it's already almost at the target. From here, I'm just gonna count how many squares I traverse in order to hit the target, right? So, one, two, three, four, five. If the whole thing is straight, one, two, three, four, five. So, Basically the same. The difference is simply when it's straight, the bottom hand starts here. How much of a difference does it make when the bottom hand is farther forward? Well, it's really just a matter of blade position because you can do the same thing when it's straight, but if you put the bottom hand farther forward, then the blade is further back. So the way I look at it, and I could be wrong about this, it doesn't really give you a mechanical advantage as such, but it could be potentially a little bit deceptive because to the opponent, it looks different whether the blade is here or there. If the blade is there, it looks more cocked back, and you can see that there's going to be a lot of rotation 
to get to the target. Whereas if the blade is farther forward, it may look less threatening, even though it takes the same amount of rotation to get to you. Here's the funny thing though. If you curve the blade in the opposite direction, now it's retracted quite a bit. So if you go the same length here, so again, one, two, three, four, five, it's not as close to the target as it was before. And then there's the curious case of swords with a forward curve but much shorter handle that were intended for single-handed use. So this is not even a factor because you're gripping the mostly straight part. In that case, I have to wonder if the purpose of the curvature is more to offer some resistance against the hand slipping down. The more I'm messing around with this, the more I wonder, is this just a placebo effect perhaps? Because while handling a sword with a recurve handle, I, I'm imagining that yes, I'm getting a bit of a head start, so to speak. But then when I pick up a different sword and move that around, it doesn't feel like I'm missing out, really. Obviously, weight and balance have much more of an impact on how quickly you can move a sword. And uh, handle length does too, more so than the shape, I feel like. Is it a placebo effect? I'm honestly not sure. I mean, in this particular case, it's not a world of difference, right? The pommel is a couple of centimeters ahead, which is really not all that much. If, if the pommel was here, say, that would be pretty extreme, so that might make more of a difference. The way it is, subjectively, it seems to make a bit of a difference, but not worlds apart. And that's basically how I feel about curved and recurved blades, too. Conceptually, there may be a bit of an advantage by maximizing the slicing action in one way or another, but in practical terms, other factors are more important, I find. You know, as I said, the, the blade profile, you know, cross-section, the sharpness of the edge, etc. So the, the mass and mass distribution balance. There's so many things that go into sword design. So you reach a point of diminishing returns. Again, if you're more physics-brained or engineering and, and can figure out a way to explain this in, in fairly simple terms to uh, kind of illustrate why this makes a difference and how much, uh, that would be great. Other than that, that's about what I have to say about it. So feel free to discuss. I'm definitely not claiming to know the be-all end-all about this. In fact, I'm still speculating. Anyway, thanks for watching and take care, folks.